And all my notes and everything completely ready to do a video on Sergeant Reckless, and then this happened and completely derailed my entire train of thought. My wife somehow found and then accidentally bought or bought it on purpose to upset me single ply toilet paper. <laughs> Today we're talking about military grade toilet paper, which is honestly gonna be a brief history of toilet paper and then it's rapidly just gonna devolve into me yelling my frustrations at the existence of single ply toilet paper, also known as military grade toilet paper or John Wayne toilet paper because it's rough, it's tough, and it doesn't take shit from anybody. So if you're here to learn about military history, sorry, not gonna be a whole lot of that this week. But if you wanted to watch the world's angriest, most unhinged TED talk about bathroom habits, well, you're in luck. I make dad jokes without trying sometimes, apparently. Anyways, our story begins at the dawn of mankind. People have always been wiping their butts, it's just a matter of how. And until very recently in human history, you were kind of just stuck with using whatever you had readily available. If you lived in the woods, you would use some leaves, maybe some moss. Apparently, if you lived near the ocean, you would use seashells, which I don't really understand, but whatever. <laughs> he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> <laughs> then mankind advances to the point that we start recording history. We know that the Greeks were wiping their butts with broken pieces of pottery. We know that the Romans used a communal sponge on a stick that they would then just leave in a bucket of vinegar next to the toilet for the next guy, which is disgusting. And then it's also pretty well documented that the Native Americans and pilgrims were wiping their butts with corn cobs, which... <clears throat> I have questions, but I'm also not sure I want answers. Fast forward to 590 AD, China is credited with the first use of toilet paper, which makes sense because they invented paper. Now, fast forward again, like 900 years, nobody else is using toilet paper yet. It's 1455 and King Henry VI has just created a new position in his royal council, the Yeoman of the Stool. This job title is awarded to a man by the name of William Grimsby and for the rest of his life, his entire job is to clean the king's butt. Then after 30 years of being the royal cheat cleaner, he retires, the position gets renamed to groom of the stool, and I'm not kidding you, one person has held this position from the years of 1455 to 1901. The English monarch has always had a royal butt cleaner. And this is the part where you're like, okay, where's the punchline? The chubby electron guy's just trying to make fun of Great Britain again. Like, no, this is real life. There's no punchline. It's documented. It's actually documented every dude that's ever held the position of royal butt wiper from 1455 to 1901. And most of them got knighted for it. Could you imagine that guy hanging out at the bar with all the other knights? Like, hey, how'd you get knighted? <sighs> Let me tell you, man, I've seen some shit. Fast forward again, 1799, we're like 40 years into the Industrial Revolution. America has won the Revolutionary War against Great Britain, officially upgrading from the USB to the USA. It is at this point that the mass production of paper begins. You start seeing things like the Farmer's Almanac, the Sears Catalog, and overall scrap paper becomes much more readily available, and that's what people start using to wipe their butts. Which is actually why today, if you look at the Farmer's Almanac, there's a black dot in the upper right-hand corner. That's so you know where to drill the hole out so you can hang it on a hook in the outhouse. It's kind of like an homage to the history of the fact that the farmer's almanac was primarily used as toilet paper for a couple hundred years. Hey, reading material. So farmer's almanac, Sears catalogs, and outhouses are pretty much the toilet standard in North America for the next hundred years. Then late 1800s, indoor plumbing finally becomes more prevalent in like hotels, fancy businesses, and really rich people houses. Also worth noting, we could have had the flushable toilet way sooner because despite the fact that they weren't really around until the late 1800s, it was actually invented in the late 1500s by a poet by the name of Sir John Harrington, but the entire idea was suppressed by Queen Elizabeth I because Sir John Harrington was critical of the English government at the time. So she decided that she was going to take his blueprints, have one made just for herself, and then never let it see the light of day for like a couple hundred years. So yeah, she was literally sitting on the only toilet known to mankind and hogging the technology all to herself. So go ahead and add that to the list of reasons that the First Amendment's important, because without the freedom of speech, some government official might come along and literally deprive mankind of flushable toilets for like 300 years just because they don't like what some Somebody's saying. So then 1897, an American inventor by the name of Joseph Gayetti invents the world's first commercial toilet paper. He kind of markets it as like a medical tissue paper for the bathroom that's supposed to be better for you than the Sears catalog or the Farmer's Almanac. For one, it doesn't clog up your toilet like those do because it dissolves in water. And for two, it hasn't gone through a printing process, so it should be healthier for you because the printing process back then incorporated like lead ink and arsenic and all other types of hazardous chemicals that you probably shouldn't be pressing up against your dirt button every day for your your entire life. And the entire idea
is kind of a huge flop because the American public is too shy to actually go out and buy toilet paper because I guess at this point in time, it was taboo to let anybody know that you pooped. So rather than selling directly to the consumer, he would end up doing private label stuff and selling it to like hotels and all the businesses that had toilets. So instead of having like the Gay Eddy brand of toilet paper, he would have, you know, such and such hotel would have their own private label packaging and he would sell it directly to them. And that's kind of how toilet paper got off the ground. Then over the course of the next 50 years, indoor plumbing becomes even more common amongst normal people. Toilet paper really takes off. And then in 1942, St. Andrew's paper mill does something revolutionary, something that has changed the entire face of mankind. The genius scientists working for this paper mill said, Holy fuck, we should just sell this. And from that point on, everybody ditched single ply toilet paper and only made two ply or greater toilet paper for the rest of human history because that was the right ethical thing to do is what I want to tell you, but that's not the reality we live in because somehow single ply toilet paper still exists and it's bullshit. Okay, maybe I'm out of line, but I like my toilet paper the same way Pixar likes their moms. Thick, okay? Not only am I mad about this, I'm legitimately confused at the science that goes into this technology. I mean, how they get it to be so sharp, yet so fragile at the same time is terrifying. Buh! You know, single ply toilet paper might actually be better for the environment because you're saving trees. Buh! Okay, look, do I like trees and want to help save the environment? Sure, why not? But let's be honest here, if there's a time and a place, and the minute your finger breaks through that single ply toilet paper, Fuck them trees. Okay, I'm just trying to get clean and get back to work. I don't need to get in touch with my inner self. Furthermore, it's definitely not gonna save any trees because the minute I realize that it's single ply toilet paper, here's what's gonna happen. Two hours later. Because I'm like 250 pounds at summertime and I know that with the slightest amount of gooch sweat, that first layer of single ply toilet paper is going to dissolve on contact like a fucking Listerine strip, okay? I'm not taking any chances. Unless, God forbid, I'm in a public restroom and some corporate executive has decided that he's going to raise profit margins this year by really cutting back on the toilet paper expense and installed one of these fucking things that rations toilet paper. These things should be illegal. It's cruel and unusual punishment and false imprisonment, okay? I went into this bathroom thinking that I was just gonna have a normal bathroom experience and go on with my day, and now I'm in a fucking Saw movie. Okay, we have to stop this because the way this is going, it's 2023 right now. I guarantee you if we don't do something about this, by 2030, I'm going to have to watch an ad on the toilet paper dispenser before it gives me a single sheet of single ply toilet paper. And I'm going to have to go through 45 minutes of ads just to get enough paper to wipe my ass next time I have to go to the bathroom in public. So if you're like some high level executive or a CEO or some marketing guy at a big company and they come to the table and they're like, we're really going to cut down on toilet paper expenses this year. That's how we're going to increase profit margins. Hear me out. Don't do that. Just be like, go the exact opposite direction of everywhere else and then run an ad. Imagine if you went to a gas station and that gas station had ads that were running on TV that were like, come to Fat Electrician's Taquitos and Gas where we have medium grade toilet paper because we think that if you're smart enough to shop here, you're also smart enough to know how to wipe your own ass. It's a really good marketing strategy because then every time they go to a different gas station and they see this shit, they're going to be like, oh wow, this gas station doesn't trust me to wipe my own ass. I should probably go Go to fat electricians taquitos and gas i'm putting that on a shirt fat electricians taquitos and gas we trust you to wipe your own ass it's going to be perfect i'm so worked up about this i'm just going to have to run for public office that's going to be my entire platform what the i'm going to abolish happened? single ply toilet paper and then leave you alone it's the only thing i can do at this point i mean if we can strong arm apple into starting to use the usb c port like every other phone on the planet we should be able to abolish single ply toilet paper so i guess in conclusion if you made it this far into this extremely unhinged ted talk thank you you. Hopefully you learned something about the history of toilet paper or Queen Elizabeth I suppressing the toilet because she doesn't believe in the freedom of speech or something along those lines. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. Now I have to go buy real toilet paper, then I'm going to finish my Sergeant Reckless video, and then I have to decide if I'm either going to run for public office or open up my own chain of gas stations. I've not got to do an angry rant video in like almost a year, so I guess it's time for one of those. I just don't know what topic I'm going to do it on yet. Is this the right kind of toilet paper?
No. No, where did this, like, army toilet paper, where did you even get this? It was cheap. Uh, sweetheart, we can afford, like, the medium-grade toilet paper. I could, this toilet paper is so thin, I can see the future through it. What's the future called? Poop on my finger, more than likely. 